So now these are center aligned and it is actually following the rule of alignment that nothing should be placed on the page arbitrarily. Every item should have a visual connection with something else on the page. Here's the visual connection. That's our center line. It goes right down the center and goes through the top element to the bottom element. However, when we have a group of text like this, center lining it is actually one of the weaker options. True, there are some instances that it's perfectly appropriate for, but I'm going to show you a slightly better choice, especially when it comes to business cards. The line that is here and present is one that your head is actually coming up with because your eyes can see and figure out where the center of an object is and then decide whether or not the items that are on that line of center are balanced on either side. But there's not a real line there so <laughs> we're going to make a real line. The way to do that is to go with either left or right alignment. I still have all of my layers selected, but I'm going to pretend you don't and do this instead. Click on the top one, hold shift and click on the bottom one. We'll do the same trick we did last time. Grab your text tool first and choose the alignment you want to do. I'm going to choose right alignment for this first one. And then again, grab your move tool and choose the alignment option that also goes with this. So here is my two objects with this line along the right side, so that's right alignment. You saw that adjust just a tiny bit. Now I can click it, hold shift so it doesn't move up. <laughs> well, click on it, I hit undo by the way, click on it, move it across and then hold shift and that will keep it from losing its top bottom center. So I'm going to move this over to the right a ways and I'm eyeballing it right now, but something you should know is that every time you do a printed project, there's an area within it that's considered the safe text area. And for most things, that's about an eighth of an inch or point, oh, never mind. I can't remember exactly what an eighth of an inch is. So I'm going to set mine back to inches and grab one ruler and count it out over here and then just go for eyeballing the rest. So here's a half inch, quarter inch, eighth inch. There's a guideline. Do the same for the top, same for the side now that I know what to look for. Now here's where this could get a little bit annoying, that snap to feature. So I would turn that off because it's not letting me actually put that right where I need it to go. Go to view and turn snap off for now. There we go. Now I can control it exactly. And then one for the bottom. In this safe zone, your text will not get accidentally trimmed. Also, that uh, harking back to about lesson three, do you remember what an uncomfortable visual tangent is? It's when something is almost touching an edge and we really don't want text that is right on the edge. Unless that's sort of a deliberate style choice, it's not great in the type world. So I would actually move this back at least to that line. And the other uncomfortable tangent that's happening here is right where this W hits the G. Well, I should fix that. I could do it a couple ways. There's one fix that you could select your main word here, go to your character panel and choose the double T Turning something into caps takes care of those little pesky G's and P's and Q's. That little bit that drops down is called a descender and sometimes they get in the way. However, if you're working on a business card, especially if it's for an existing business, there's a pretty good chance that the name needs to say the same. In fact, for some businesses, it's even part of their trademark look. It's described the font type, the font size, the font color, and that it's the way it looks. So we can't do that. I could move the Samson Wold and Vice President away from it, but then I would end up with three elements, which again is not something I really want to do. This is why we're going to shift this back up. And I'm looking at spacing, that it's kind of even between the R and the top of the S, and then overall even through here. And 
we will try a different alignment. So if one alignment doesn't work, maybe try a different alignment. Let's grab all our text again. Grab your move or your text tool. Click left align. <laughs> grab your move tool. Click the left align button there and then click and drag over to the left side of the page. And there you can see that it just automatically took care of that pesky little G. This text below it doesn't interfere and we should be good to go. The spacing thing, there are a lot of really finicky little rules. In fact, the type and print industry has its own measuring system. If you right click up, up on the rulers, you'll notice that we have, other than pixels and inches and centimeters and millimeters, which you're familiar with, we also have points and picas, and those are measurements used in the printing industry. You probably won't run into these very much, but people that are spend their whole day dealing with font and type get really picky about how far away or how many points away something is. For now, what we're going to do is just eyeball the space between these elements. Using the align options wouldn't quite work here because of descenders and ascenders, the parts that go up. So I'm just looking at the space here and here, keeping in mind the distance here, and moving it around until it looks evenly spaced. And then down here, I'm going to make sure that the space between this looks like the same space between that. So when you're looking at a design and there's something that draws your eye, look at it and say, okay, does it draw my eye because it's a good thing or because it's maybe a bad thing, like that W overlapping the G, that was kind of a bad thing and we needed to fix that. So that's a good thing to watch out for. The other thing to watch out for is some trap space. Now in the example on the website, I've actually spaced these further apart, so I'm going to do that just to follow along with that. I'm going to select these top ones and move them up to my top guideline, and these bottom ones and move them down to my bottom guideline. When I do that, in fact if I move that just a little further, when I do that and hide my guides, so view, show guides, I'm going to start using that command key. This looks pretty good coming down, but there's sort of this little box right here. It's not quite a box because it actually has an open end, but it kind of gets boxed in from the dot com, the edge of this, and then the edge of the paper, and it's not really big enough to do anything. So when you spot areas like that, we call those trapped white space, and it's officially trapped white space if it's trapped on all sides, then just rearrange things to try and either minimize or completely get rid of it. So in this case, I would take my phone number and move it up above the website and then put these both back down here at the bottom. Now I'm going to use my command semicolon control to bring my guides back up. You'll notice something here. When you look at a line of text, it kind of has its own lines going on. If I grab another ruler, here across the top of these letters, it forms a line. The top of the letters is known as the X height, and then along the bottom it forms a line as well. That's the baseline. So the X height, anything that goes above that is an ascender, and anything that goes below the baseline is a descender. I don't really expect you to remember that, but I just want you to know when I refer to those things what the heck I'm talking about. So I'm going to take these two, grab my move tool, and nudge them down to where the baseline of that bottom one is on the guideline. To nudge things, grab your move tool, hold command, and then just use your down key. Really any of your arrow keys. That's really great for a fine adjustment. So we're looking good there. I'm going to zoom back. So we've taken care of quite a few issues on this. Let's talk a little bit about font size. If you grab your text tool and click on the name of this person and look up in your text size box, you'll notice that it's 12 point something. 12 point is kind of what we got used to working with when you were writing things in Word. and um, The 
12 point average that word programs seem to do, not just word, but any word processor program seem to set your type at, is actually really big. And usually you don't see 12 point anywhere else except a children's book. So 12 point font, especially on something this small, is going to feel kind of big and clunky. So it's really important to size your font to fit whatever project you're going on. Because we got to remember, if I grab my zoom tool, right click, and choose print size, it's going to be tiny. Now if you have any f cards floating around and you take a look at several different ones and pick out one that you s feel looks sophisticated, I can promise you the type on that is not 12 point. The type on that is probably in the neck of the woods of 8. So I'm going to choose all of the uh, the smaller type here, so everything but the main name. And I'm doing that by clicking on my first layer holding command and then clicking on the other layers that I want. And coming up here to my size and choosing 10. Nope, 8. 8, I said 8. Now that made it really small. So let's actually go back up, maybe 1. So now it's at 9. You can do 9 or maybe about 10. Anything bigger than 10 feels really big. In fact, on a business card, 10 still feels big. 10 is what standard book size font gets typed at, so if you're reading a novel, the type in there is probably about 10 size. So we've got it sized down about the way we want it. I would do a little bit more shifting around now that this is a smaller type size. I'm going to do that by clicking on each one of these and then holding command and nudging it up. So if you want to grab two, command click on it, hold shift, command click on the other one, and then you can move them together. All right, so there's our size issue addressed. Let's look at this contrast wise. I'm going to hit command semicolon to hide my guides. The contrast is the degree of difference between two elements. And we've got some different things going on here. I guess we could really look at this as three elements. We've got the main company name kind of as its own thing, and then this is a group, and that's a group. They're all the same color, though, so it's not actually as contrasting as it could be. Also, black type on white is the easiest to read very true that often business cards have other colors, but for this beginning example, we're going to go with the really safe stuff. And we will again select the type information and turn its color to black. So grab your type tool and click on the color box, drag it down to the bottom left corner and click OK. The other way to contrast type is to actually pick two different setups of type. So, I can't remember the fonts I use, so I'm going to open up my end point card here. And we'll just pop right to that. In the next little bit on the lesson, it talks about the different types of fonts. And we'll go into that more on the next couple of videos, but mostly here you want to pick two fonts that are really contrasting from each other in style, but might have some similarities. For example, the degree of the X height along here isn't too different from the X height along here. This is a san or this is a serif <laughs> font. In fact, the one I've picked is Marion, and then the name is Avenir and I can't swear that I spelled those correctly. So popping back to the one that you guys are on, I'm going to change those fonts real quick. So I chose Avenir Black, which makes it really heavy. And then for the other ones, it was Marion, I believe. All right, so my Photoshop did something that drives me nuts, but uh, do I not have Marion in here anymore? I've done a bunch of other stuff, so I might not have Marion in here anymore, but I'm going to pick a pretty standard one called Gaudi. 
The font this was at previously was Helvetica, and Helvetica is a great font. It's been around forever, but it's been very overused, so I would choose something different than Helvetica. We are almost done with this. The last thing I would look at is kind of finalizing the spacing between things, especially now that we've changed our fonts, and especially the tracking and kerning. So tracking is the difference between all of the characters, the size or the space between all of the characters in a line. So I'm going to affect the a tracking on all of these black bits of type. I'm going to do that over here in my character panel. It is the one that says VA with a white box around it. If I click on that VA and just drag it to the right and let go, you'll see that the tracking changes. This is a little too far. If you track out too far, it's actually hard to read. So bring it in and in. That looks pretty good. I would recommend about 15 if you're on a similar font. The next thing would be go in and do the individual kerning. And kerning is really important on projects like this. When there's only a few pieces of type, each one of those pieces becomes a lot more important. So I'm going to grab my text tool and find the first spot where it could use a little bit of kerning. So looking up here, there's a couple of spots. The F is almost touching the U and the I, and there's quite a bit of space between the G and the E. So I'm just going to put my cursor between two of these letters and use my arrow keys to move back and forth. And anywhere I want to add just a little more space, hold down Option, and use your left and right arrow keys. And then to take away, oh, excuse me, to take away space, hold down Option and use your left arrow key. So to add space, right arrow key, to take away space, left arrow key. There are several uh, resources for doing perfect kerning on the typography resource page on the website. So don't just take my word for it because it's, again, it's kind of an eyeball training thing. You definitely want to look for things like V's and W's and Y's because see how the V and the I are quite a bit further apart here on Vice President? I'm going to move that just a tiny bit closer and look for anything. If you kind of squint a little bit, you can see stuff that looks like it's hanging away from the rest of the word and could be moved in maybe a little bit closer, or things that are almost touching and could be moved a little further away. The other thing to look for is down in this phone number, there's a lot of space around this dash. And I'm going to delete those. And now there's not enough space. So you can see there's a little bit of a problem unless you know about kerning. So I'm actually just going to kern the space that I want in between these so that it looks like even between the 6 and the 7. So you really could spend quite a while fiddling with kerning. That's all I'm going to do on this one. This would be your business card ready to go. Most websites that you can create a business card on and or just upload a graphic will provide you a template. And we will get into creating custom templates in the next lesson or so. So at this point, you'd save it save it as your PSD so you have your layers at all times and then you could save a flat version to print either a really high resolution JPEG, a TIFF with no layers which doesn't get compressed at all, or a PDF that's a high resolution. If you are actually doing a business card and using this as your um, main thing that you do want to print then you should really call your printer or look on their website and see what sort of file they want you to turn it in as. And that's pretty much wrapping up the little tiny business card. Let's take a look at it one last time. Zoomed out. <laughs> that's pretty small type. But I have been told by many, many people that that is actually uh, plenty big for people to look at and move on. I know you probably don't agree with me because this is all new to you. If anything, I would say you could make the word, the name and the vice president word a little bit bigger, but I would still keep the contact information pretty small. Um, business cards 
tend to be uh, a little better off if they've got some blank space on them, mostly because anymore it's a good place to write notes. So for example, when I get a business card from somebody, I might write it on it with a pencil or a pen why I have this business card or a note about the person that gave it to me. Um, yeah, so I believe I also have some links on the resources pages to guides about business cards.